The purpose of this podcast is to educate and inform. It is no substitute for professional care by your doctor or your qualified health care professional. Never disregard or delay professional medical advice because of something you've heard on this podcast or in any linked material. Guests who speak on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. Dr. Shirley neither endorses nor opposes any particular opinion discussed on this podcast. The views expressed on this podcast have no relation to those of any academic, hospital, practice, institution, or other entity with which Dr. Shirley may be affiliated. Welcome to Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty. This podcast is curated by Dr. Shirley Medea, MD, as the definitive source of holistic wellness through beauty. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Shirley. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Fab, a segment of the Forever Fab podcast where I review products, services, experiences, and frankly, whatever, (laughs) in 15 minutes or less. If the full-length podcast is a couture dress, then 15 Minutes of Fab is a button-down Henley paired with leather leggings, so it's a bit more casual. If you don't have time to tune into my full-length podcast, check out 15 Minutes of Fab. Fab. Some have considered it truth and beauty, plastic surgery secrets, or as a nerdier academic take on wellness and beauty with a dash of fashion, of course, because that's fab. Consider it what you may. My aim is to engage you as a credible and authoritative voice in most, if not all, aspects of beauty and wellness with a dash of fashion. And this includes products, wellness services, technologies, new scientific research, and innovations in plastic surgery. Also, very exciting, just juicy, juicy stuff. As the founder of Holistic Plastic Surgery, and I am, my approach to beauty is through a lens of wellness that's grounded in science, backed by medical study and research, strengthened by my clinical experience, and that's a lot of years, and bolstered by surgical training with the use of principles and techniques of plastic surgery. So I combine all of that stuff to bring you Forever Fab and 15 Minutes of Fab. And then, of course, there's my love of fashion. Of course. So, in essence, I feel uniquely qualified to talk with you about beauty, about wellness, aesthetics, and plastic surgery, as well as products and services within those spaces. And a dash of fashion. (laughs) And I feel uniquely qualified, not only because of my extensive training and my expansive background, both of which have been very expensive for me, but also because I'm one of you, right? Many of the human issues around aging and being a fierce, fab person, as well as an agent for positive change, I try to live these too. You're not alone. So together, we can help the world to become a more beautiful, forever fab place. So that said, let's get started. The title of this week's episode of 15 Minutes of Fab on the Forever Fab podcast is How to Define Ageless. I'm going to share my opinion on what it truly means to age well, at least from my perspective. You may agree or disagree, but that's what this podcast is about. Let's engage in some dialogue. Hear me out. Looking fabulous at every age involves more than just wearing the appropriate length skirt or the right color, you know, lip gloss or lipstick, um, or just completely donning yourself in the latest beauty and fashion trends, right? The look, if you're a fashion person, I believe the look is made complete by exuding a confidence of knowing that you're not only fashionable and maybe even stylish, but that you look well. So I'm saying that there's a difference between looking stylish or looking fashionable and looking well. I think this looking well is a part of well-being or a part of feeling well. So that wellness is in part achieved by so many things like managing how you age and in managing how you age, I think it's within that paradigm that there are opportunities to age better 
age with grace or to age less. But let's be real. Aging is a natural phenomenon, right? It happens. It's supposed to happen. There are a number of factors that contribute to aging. And in general, we classify that as intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors. I've spoken to you about those factors in previous podcasts. So just as a review, intrinsic factors are the ones that you're born with. So you can't control them. You just can't, right? Genetics, for example. Extrinsic factors are typically learned or acquired through experience. And so they can be changed. And the factors that lend to aging, which can't be changed, though some of those intrinsic factors, as I mentioned earlier, include genetics. They also include skin type, pore size, and other things. But the extrinsic factors or the factors that you can modify to help you age differently can be changed. They can be improved. And they include lifestyle, nutrition, stress management, right? Sleep habits. So all of those tend to also be included in a field called epigenetics, epi. So the things that are outside of your genetics. Okay. It also should be noted that your appearance or how you look, as well as how you feel about different aspects of your life, are believed to play an increased role in wellness. And I think it's beyond a belief at this point. I, it's just science. And in fact, the World Health Organization modified, they modified their definition of health to be, quote, a state of complete physical mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity end quote like if that's not the definition of holistic beauty or holistic plastic surgery i don't know what is also wellness has been defined by the national wellness association as quote an active process of becoming aware of and making choices toward a more successful existence end quote I would love to know, hit me up, how do you define a successful existence? And you can't cheat by saying successful existence is wellness, okay? Give me some more. (laughs) Also, or therefore, right? Therefore, aging well is an individualized process, and it's a broad process. It encompasses several variables of health and living. Some of those I just mentioned to you, the intrinsic and extrinsic factors, among other things, epigenetics, et cetera. So if we, if we think about it that way, then it stands to reason that you actually have a choice in how well you age. And who doesn't like having choices, right? We love options. <laughs> Physiologically, they say that the aging process typically begins around age 30. Now, that can vary from one person to another, cultures, environments, et cetera. But generally speaking, for argument's sake, let's just say this situation, the aging situation begins at around age 30. Physiologically, meaning the stuff and the processes and the systems that are occurring, you know, within and throughout your body, hormonal changes occur, metabolism slows down, and your cells begin to undergo what's believed to be called a programmed cell death or a programmed predetermined decline in function. So these, along with a whole bunch of other things, lead to a whole bunch of other things, which in general are the manifestations of aging. On the level of the skin, your skin, your facial skin at least becomes dry, less elastic, less firm from the loss of you know, making collagen, which we once did so robustly in our youth. And your skin may also show signs of sun damage because again, you know, that metabolism and the repair mechanisms have slowed down. They're not as efficient as they once were. So now if we have signs of sun damage, maybe your skin was able to get rid of them earlier, but now not so much, right? Your skin can also be uneven, discolored, sagging, and quicker to sort of develop wrinkles and also experience loss of volume or facial fat. Boy, 
if I could like selectively gain weight, you know, kind of in my face only where I need it, that would be amazing. And every place else, not so. <laughs> I would opt out. So all of these things that are happening are the results of a combination of natural aging, again, intrinsic, and also those extrinsic factors or extrinsic aging. And those extrinsic factors can be managed in a do-it-yourself manner, plus or minus a little help from our plastic surgery friends or dermatology friends if you choose to go that route. Many years ago, many years ago, well over a decade now, I introduced the philosophy of holistic plastic surgery, and I, I introduced it to reflect the concept and my belief that beauty and healing emanate from within. From my perspective, outside will, your outside, right, how you look, how you appear, will not fully experience, you know, the maximal beneficial outcomes after therapeutic or elective interventions, such as injectables, right, chemical peels, you know, lasers, etc., unless the core foundation right? Like your body's internal organ systems and external, your skin are intact and themselves optimized, right? For me, holistic plastic surgery involves more than surgery. And again, I created this philosophy, so it should be right that I define it and its parameters. So it's more than just surgery. It's more than surgery. Non-surgical treatments are also involved, right? Those could be injectables, the fillers, the Botox, the Zeomans, the chemical peels, the Vitaglow, you know, multivitamin facial infusion. All of that could be part of an individualized and customized and personalized plan to achieve your beauty goals. Great. That's a plug for my practice. But the approach also assesses one's dietary habits and nutrition, skincare regimen, general lifestyle stress management, all those things, all those things, and incorporates recommendations for therapies that complement your goals, such as proper nutrition, stress reduction techniques, manual lymphatic drainage, Reiki, acupuncture, detox, vitamin supplementations, homeopathy. I've got many tools in my toolkit, folks. Nevertheless, this philosophy is not for everyone, right? Some of my plastic surgery colleagues think I'm woot woot. That's okay. Patients alike, <laughs> beauty editors, they're just like, where is this chick coming from? That's okay. I'm not for everyone. I'm not supposed to be. Not everyone is for everyone. Not everything is for everyone. But regardless of how you choose to manage your age and your state of being and your state of well being, whether you include the help of a surgeon's needle or scalpel, regardless of what your beauty philosophy is, it's beneficial to look good and feel great for your given age, whatever age you are, to be a better version of your current self. I think we can all agree on that. So to age well, I typically prescribe, right, my top 10 tips for looking fabulous at every age. Isn't there a magazine that does that? It's, I think it's called Fabulous at Every Age. Somebody let me know. I'm not sure if it's allure or glamour or something else. Fabulous at Every Age. Well, this is Dr. Shirley's Fabulous at Every Age, my fab 10 top tips. Or maybe I should say fab 10, fab top 10 tips. <laughs> fab TTT. Fab 3T. Okay, never mind. Anyway, Following fab top 10 tips for looking fabulous at every age, according to Dr. Shirley Madeira, founder, originator, creator of holistic plastic surgery. Woo! I am on myself today. Okay, number one, establish a good foundation, meaning take care of your skin, moisturize it, protect it from the sun, stop touching it throughout the day. If you're going to add injectables or actually do surgery, Trust me, healthy, well-moisturized skin responds better to the needle and the scalpel. Number two, know who you are and who you are not. Meaning, understand what looks good on you. Know your own face, right? 
injectables in the laugh lines on one person may not be good for you, may not be suitable for you, right? What fits your best friend's cheeks or chest, frankly, may not work for you. There's no judgment in seeking plastic surgery or cosmetic procedures, no judgment at all. Invest in the consultation so that you know what the best options are from an experienced professional, not just an internet MD. (laughs) Fab, top 10 tip number three, keep your mind active and your brain performing. Engage in lifelong learning. This is a quintessential aspect of aging well. Number four, stop smoking, period. If you need help, get it. I got nothing else to say about that. Number five, avoid prolonged, unprotected sun exposure. You thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? Sun exposure. Avoid prolonged, unprotected sun exposure. Look, we need sun. We need the sun so our bodies can make vitamin D. Our bodies do not internally, you know, just out of the blue, make vitamin D just like that. We need some help, and that help comes from the sun. And you've heard it all before. So use sunscreen. Okay. And if you don't know what sunscreen to use, try to use a non-toxic one. Feel free to go to ewg.org, Environmental Working Group, and they've got a rating system and you can choose what sunscreen works for you. Okay, number six, be emotional. Maintain an optimistic attitude and try to live an emotionally enriched life every day. Folks, I know it's hard especially these days, the past few years, and it continues. But it's important. Nourish your spirituality and have faith. Have the faith that everything will be all right. May take some time, may take too much time, but have faith. Explore your metaphysical core. Be present. Know yourself. Know that you know. Practice a bit of detachment or non-attachment. I know it's considered a you know a Buddhist teaching, but my goodness, it really is helpful. Look for deeper meaning in things and don't get so attached or hung up on the temporary, the fleeting, the relatively unimportant, relatively unimportant. Number seven, honor your temple with good nutrition. A proper eating regimen will help to ensure normal healing, maintain active metabolism, and encourage efficient elimination of toxins. So it's not just about what you put in. It's also about what comes out. You are what you eat as well as what you don't, what you don't eliminate. So they both go hand in hand. And if, if healthy or healthful eating is lacking or you just can't do it, then look into vitamins and supplements and ask your physician or nutritionist about what to take to complement your eating lifestyle and what works for your body. No matter what works or doesn't work for your body, limit the intake of sugar. That's such a hard one for me. Oh, I have such a sweet tooth. Remember I talked earlier about that gluten-free, dairy-free cupcake? Gluten-free and dairy-free, okay, check, check, but it wasn't (laughs) sugar-free. So limit the intake of sugar. Sugar does nasty things to proteins and molecules, including collagen, right? There's something called glycosylation. Boy, that sugar sticks on that collagen and it just warps it. And that ages. Also limit your intake of fat and alcohol. Stay hydrated to keep your body clear and clean and help it to clear itself of toxins. And this is particularly helpful actually after surgery when your body enters into a state of relative dehydration and is briefly deprived of nutritional support. So nutrition is key, not only before surgery, but after surgery as well. And just always, frankly. Fab, top 10 tip number eight, remain social. Studies have shown that a strong social network, and I'm not just talking about social media. Frankly, I think I'm going to take social media completely out of that. Remain truly, physically, in-person, social. Because many studies have shown that a strong social network may improve health, and that close, close, real, authentic friendships 
may actually incre increase natural immun immunity. That's strong. That's rich. Number nine. You've heard this one a trillion times. Exercise regularly. There's just no way around it. There's just no way around it. I think one of the keys to health and well-being is that input, you know, must be less than output, right? So exercise, use that energy. What you take in is energy for your body, right? What you put out is energy for your body. So that has to be balanced in such a ratio that you stay well. Number 10, manage stress effectively and often. And in this stress management, I'm going to include some sub tips or tips within tips because managing stress takes on so many forms because stress takes on so many forms. So un under the fab top 10 tip of manage stress effectively and often, I include get consistent and adequate sleep every night because sleep deprivation limits your body's ability to regenerate tissues. And those tissues that need to be regenerated are skin and muscle. And therefore, lack of sleep is going to affect how you look and definitely how you feel. So listen to your body. And if you can, try to find out your, you know, chronotype, right? For your body type, what is the best time for you to get to sleep and the number of hours that you need to sleep to feel your best and for your body to function optimally? Check it out. So, in the end, aging well is a dynamic process, just as the aging process itself is dynamic. So, to look and feel well involves a balanced lifestyle that incorporates a variety of factors to help you achieve successful living. With or without a needle or the knife, to age well is to be ageless. And that agelessness is on the inside and out. Thank you for listening to this week's Forever Fab podcast episode of 15 Minutes of Fab. Until next time, stay beautiful and forever fab inside and out. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty, curated by Dr. Shirley Madir, MD. Live beautifully and help make the world a more beautiful place.